Well, you know what they say. Sometimes when there's an obstacle in your path, you just gotta... Oh, jeez. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are here in Peach. <laughs> great news, great news, Eddie. We got great news. What's the news? The great news is that right there is Jolne Vilmos. My boy, my boy Vilmos. Jolne Vilmos. Jolne, of course, the very famous porcelain and ceramics that come from Peach. You know, all over Hungary, we have these very idiosyncratic tiles that are on the tops of buildings and they're known as Jolne tiles. You see them all over Budapest, at the Matyash Templom, at the Museum of Applied Arts, all over the place. The post office building, Putyos, Najanya, Finci. And Jolne Vilmos, whoa, Elnazest, could get ourselves killed here, was the man whose company made them famous. So as we roll out here into Sechenyter, the heart of Pech, we see over there what is today a Catholic church but was in the past a mosque. Of course, Pech, like much of Hungary, was under Ottoman domination for many, many years. The skaters are out and about today. We've got the Hell Ride, the Velu Hell Ride. They say it's the party of the year. Coming up a bit later. What a glorious day. Global warming aside. Here we've got Hunyadi Janos, one of the best Bayuses in all of Hungary. The father of Hunyadi Matyash, who of course became King Matyash in the 15th century. But it was Hunyadi Janos, his father. Oh, hello. See us, Dokmeniki. Hello, hello. See ya. His father, Hunyadi Janos, who defeated the Ottomans at the Battle of Nandor Fehevar in 1456. All right, we got this kebab here. I'm already halfway through. No napkins from the best kebab over there. Eddie's tucking into one right now. How is it, Eddie? That's the best I've had. Best you have. Very good. It's also the first I've had. First he's had. This is the first kebab you've had? I, I don't eat. Dude, I was vegan for years. Oh yeah, vegan for years. Makes sense. Anyway, great way to start your day of adventure in Peach. Is a little visit to the best kebab shop in Seicheni Square. We're gonna fuel up and push forwards. We can see here the Seicheni Ter in miniature. And right to the right, we have Kirai Utsa, the Kirai Street, the King Street. One of the most famous streets in all of Page, if not the most famous. It's been a market street since the Middle Ages. Yo, Zene. Greta Lalok. The magnificent Hungarian National Theater here in Page. Really a wonderful building. Turn of the century, and I mean the 19th century. Turn of the 19th century, end of the 19th century. That is the time of the decorative arts, of the applied arts. And that is when the Jolnay factory really shot into its state as being one of the most famous in all of Hungary, eventually becoming the biggest. And it was much to do with the work of Jolnay Vilmos. And we'll find out a little bit more about him and his company over at the Jolne Kulturalis Neged, the Jolne Cultural District. It's gonna be a treat. You see this right here, ready? No, what is this? This is the Budai Kapu, because through this gate, you took the road to Budapest. But back then it was known as Buda. 1445. 1445. What's Bo? What's Bo? Present? Present is from, from 1445. Oh, it's backwards. Backwards, until now. Pechvaros, Pechetje, middle of the 15th century. Oh, Najon Seb Kabat is Shapka. Hello. Egeshegedra. The Pechi are quite sophisticated lot. Egeshegetekra, Egesheg, Egesheg, Egesheg. I think we just have to be grateful for this beautiful day and for being in Pech and for exploring and getting out of the city. <laughs> you picked the most ratchet, like, corner of pitch. No, but even this, even this, the tree, I'm sure in the spring... I'm so grateful for this tire with a stick in it. <laughs> oh, give me a break. In the spring, this tree probably blossoms. I mean, yeah, they could put up a few oh, more walls. This is this abandoned building? Don't you love these things? And like, you like to go inside? Let's see. Okay. 
All yeah. Right, let's see what we're working with. Let's see what we're working with. <laughs> Oh, I think this is a family house. Okay. All right. Well, here we are. The Jolne Kulturalish Neged. The Jolne Cultural Quarter. We've been here before with Alexa. This time it's try. Oh, the Bob scene has. That's the puppet house. Hello. Hello. You know what? So we're here at the... That, that close, really? Good. Okay, so we're here at the Jolne Kulturalish Neged, the Jolne Cultural Quarter. And here we can see many examples of the fine Jolne applied artistics that are known throughout Hungary as well as through the rest of the world. Here we have the Jägverem, the ice house, and this evokes some Islamic architecture. Uh, and was built at the end of the 19th century. And the end of the 19th century, that's when Jolne really made its name as one of the most magnificent producers in all of Hungary. Is there like saran wrap around all those things? Yeah, they did that in the winter for some reason. That's disappointing. So Jolne was the name of a very famous and prominent Page family. But how did they get their start? Well, the journey really began when Jolne Miklos, opened up a ceramics and stoneware shop in 1853. That's five years after the 1848 revolution. Hungary was beginning to rebuild and Miklos sets up shop right here in Pech. So the shop is starting to have some success and Miklos, he has big aspirations for his children, one of whom is Vilmos. But Vilmos, he's a little bit more artistic. He wants to become a painter. And his parents are like, Vilmos, come on, you got to make some money. So they send him out to Vienna and he goes to school there to a polytechnic university. And Vilmos, he's a clever guy. In addition to being very artistic, he starts to get some ideas for how he can revolutionize his father's budding business. And he starts to use these techniques. One of them is known as Eosin, E-O-S-I-N. It's ancient Greek for the flush of dawn because the technique that he used was a very special, almost, alchemical technique, and it turned porcelain and ceramics, this iridescent, vibrant shade of color that was more magnificent than anyone had ever seen before. And another one of the techniques that was pretty similar, but used for a different purpose than pure decoration was these pyrogranite tiles that coat the roofs of many Hungarian buildings to this day. And in addition to being spectacularly gorgeous, they are also frost resistant and have other weather resistant properties that make them quite useful, quite efficient, and very well preserved. Now we often see throughout history that there's certain companies come along that are very of the zeitgeist, of the time. And this turn of the 19th century zeitgeist, it was all about applied arts, arts and crafts, decorative motifs, Art Nouveau, this vocabulary of this sort of fairy tale, romantic, over the top beautification of the world. And that is what Jolne came to epitomize. And it is no wonder that during this period, at the turn of the 19th century, which happened to coincide with Hungary's relative glory age, the Jolne factory became so economically successful. Now, something else which really helped them to accumulate European business and gain notoriety both on a national and international level was Vilmos's performance at the World Fairs. In Paris in the 1870s, there were two. There were many of these World Fairs, these World Exhibitions, where people from all over the world came to show off the new innovations that they were making with the scientific revolutions and advancements that were taking place. And Vilmos, he won some prizes at those World's Fairs. And if you don't think that helped business, well, you've got another thing coming because a World's Fair back then was the most marvelous chance to advertise that anyone could have ever imagined. Now, thanks to the riotous success of Vilmos's experience at these World's Fairs, the orders to Jolne were rolling in. And by the time Hungary threw its own Fair, the 1896 Millennial Exhibition, which happened to showcase much of the Art Nouveau architecture of Hungarian architects such as Lechner Udun and Imre Steindl and Ibel Miklos. 
Jolnay was used for everything. All on the ceramic tiles, the decorations. Jolnay Porcelan Manufactura. And you can see there that Eozin process that creates these vibrant, unique, almost alien-like greens. Oh, it just gives me goosebumps. I don't know exactly how it worked, but this would have been one of the machines that was used to fire up the superheated temperatures needed for Eozin and pyrogranites. It was a very technological process. And that was the other thing is that this was not just arts and crafts. This was science, this was innovation. This was industrial revolution at its finest. <laughs> wow. So these grounds of the Jolne Kulturali Schneged are also a campus of the Pechi Tudomanegetem, the University of Pech. It's one of Hungary's oldest and finest. You know, Pech isn't a huge city. It's about 150,000, give or take. I mean, if you think about it after Budapest, Hungary doesn't really have huge cities. They have a few in this in-between range of 90,000 to 200,000, and Pech is one of those. I think it's the fifth largest if you look at a table but it has an outsized cultural influence. And in many ways, it offers something unique to Hungary. It offers a little bit more of this mixture between Western Europe and Southeastern Europe as well. It has this Balkanite flavor to it. And that is due to its proximity to Croatia and the rest of the Balkans. And that's something that I love about Pech. It's diverse, it's multicultural, it's unique, and it's warm. It's a sunny city down south in the lovely Mechek Mountains. It's really got a lot going on. So Pech was actually settled by the Romans. I mean, at the time there were people here. You had the Celts, the Pannoni tribes, and that's what the Romans, of course, named their province in ancient Hungary was Pannonia. And Pech was known as Sopiane. <laughs> and, and Sopiane became quite a notable Roman city for a couple of things. First of all, due to its warm climate, it was great for grape growing, and we know how the Romans loved drinking wine, as well as because it became a very notable Christian city in the fourth century. But of course, soon came the Huns and the barbarian invasions, and Rome relinquished control. By the time Charlemagne came to town at the end of the eighth century, Pech was run by the Avars, who, like the Huns, were nomadic, fearsome horse people. But it was not a very heavily populated place. And Charlemagne, he made some deals, and it became a Frankish vassal state, ruled by the aforementioned Avars, as well as some Slavic tribes. And that is what Pech and where Pech stood when the Hungarians came to town in the Honfoglalash, 896. And when the Hungarians arrived in the Honfoglalash as conquering warlords, what did they say? Now, Hungary under the Magyars, when they came in in the late 9th century, it was a pagan land. Page had its experience with Christianity during the 4th century, and that's when the foundations of this very cathedral, the Page Basilica, were first laid. But it was not until after King Stephen, Istvan Kirai, made Hungary a Catholic nation in the year 1000, that construction began on this magnificent cathedral that you see behind us. And it really got going towards the end of the 11th century into the 12th, and to this day stands as one of the best examples of architecture in all of Hungary. Now let's go wander beyond these stone walls and take a look and see what we can find. So, Pech really went from strength to strength during the medieval era, and by the time of Naj Lajos, Louis the Great, the son of Karoi Roberto, Karoi Robert, the first Angevin king of Hungary, Pech, well, it was really bustling, it was really hustling, and King Louis, Louis the Great, he said, hey, we are going to build a university here, and that is what became the Pechi Tudomanegetem, the Pech University which for the past, what is it now? Seven centuries has taught legions of young Magyars how to read, think, learn, and be critical. I don't know what's going on. Maybe some social realism could be communist era. People forget 
the communist era. Not the best for arts. Good statues. Really good statues. You see what I'm talking about here? It's a city of artists. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Who is he? I don't know. He's a painter. A feshtu. You know, my mom's getting her house repainted right now in New York. Hungarian guy's doing it. His name is Zoli. And he's a feshtu. Ow. So as the 14th century turned into the 15th, during the times of King Maciasz, Pécs remained quite an important city, particularly because of one of its finest sons, a certain Janos Pannonius, Pannonius Janos, who was one of the foremost progenitors of Magyar poetry. Well, it's not often that I am rendered speechless, but in the shadow of this construction, there's not too much else to say than gaze and enjoy. Oh, it's, we can't use that. This is <laughs> this is a kid show. Oh yeah yeah. Oh look, it's miniature page. Well, check it out. Well, we got a lot of nice stuff here. An overview of the cathedral. The grounds, you can imagine being in here during the 15th century King Machiash era and what that must have been like. Of course, the next two centuries for Pech were not necessarily its most glorious age, as that was the time of Ottoman domination. But whereas some parts of Hungary really were crippled culturally by this development, Pech continued to have a relative flourishment perhaps not quite as grand as it once was, but continuing this thread of Hungarian literature and Hungarian poetry and Hungarian art that developed through adversity and truly began to flourish in the centuries ahead. Hashtag dope doors of Instagram. Oh, I guess this is YouTube. Wait, can we go inside here? Okay. Not really sure what's going on, but if we come over this way, you can see the man, the myth, the legend, Frankie Flower, Liszt Ferenc. Oh, what exquisite timing as the church bell resonates. Only two? Three. Four, five, six, and what is more, we're going down into Page. It is a hell of a place. <sighs> now, you know me, we could go through history all day. But one of the things I like best about history is walking amongst it and being able to touch and feel it and get a real tactile sense for the years that have shaped the place. Oh, Page, thank you for awakening us on this to be honest with you, quite too warm January day. But in the face of existential global crisis, there's only one thing that you can really do. Enjoy party. the, yeah, <laughs> scene cut, skate party. <laughs> we saw history, we saw history. Skate rink, Velu hell ride, wherever the hell we're going. Sort of a hedonistic uh, pagan revelry after we get out of the zone of the church where they're trying to cloister us and suppress our true feelings and emotions. Party. Enjoy the, yeah, <laughs> scene cut, skate party. Uh, the peak of Hungarian skate performance right here. Yeah. <laughs> scene cut, skate party. No, 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 everyone just loved her answer. It was a great answer. Paige is an amazing city. Oh, Paige, a Dionysian orgy. That could happen. Yeah, here he is, Janos Pannonius, that uh, 15th century Magyar writer. Look at him. Great hat. That's a terrific hat, actually. It really th makes you think. Sort of Renaissance era. He was probably going down to Italy, learning some stuff, doing this thing. Great hat. Well, you know what they say. Sometimes when there's an obstacle in your path, you just gotta... Oh, jeez. Push on through. You can have some sticker. Thank we you. call it in Hungary Matlitsa. Okay. Matlitsa. Oh, Here, yeah, pass them Thank around. You. Everyone take one. Everyone so take one. Can I have one? You have to make me the. <laughs> Thank you. Make me the biggest star in China, okay? Okay. <laughs> Come up this way. We can get a nice little view over Pech with the billowing Hungarian flag, the Magyar Zaslo, as it were, as it were. Oh, look at the Mechek Hills out there. Come a little bit around this way. 
You can see the Page TV tower built during the Soviet era. Monumental. Yeah, I can't zoom that far. No, that's all right. And then over here, as the sunlight sets beyond the plane. What a privilege. What a privilege and an honor to be here today. You know, it's been a nice experience uh, doing this episode with a camera, with my friend Eddie shooting with the microphone, increasing the production value and the production quality. And since the new year is a time for saying what we're grateful for and saying what we feel blessed to have, I would like to say that I feel blessed for the opportunity to try new experiences with my friends and also to have all of you out there motivating me to continue to take this channel to bigger and better places. And I wish you all the best this year. And I hope that you will find whatever it is that you are looking for. And one last time, thank you for inspiring me. And thank you to the lovely city of Pitch for blessing us with this triumphant, transcendent, and spiritual afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to the bar of the future. We're going downstairs now. Uh, we're gonna <laughs> drink the beer of the future of Maiden Pitch. This right here is the salon. The salon show, the soul of Pitch. Oh. Who they are? How old do you think this wall is? Well, it was built in. Tizen utedik a Sazar. Yeah, it's somewhere around. Tizen, 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 Tizen,
I don't know why it's called actually uh, Kanas Pechenya, but it looks like something that you want to eat at a borzo, which is where we're eating it. Take a nice bite of this. Mm. <laughs> a little bit of uh, kaposta cabbage. Maybe a lot of cabbage. Take another bite. Get that in there. Steal some wine from your friend. Very Hungarian. This is some bab -guyash. Oh. Bab -guyash. Down the hatchet. Is that what you say? Down the hatch. Bab guyash nagyanyog. Igazabal egyut asisem nyots nyots pons ketu. 8.2. 8.2. Eddie agrees. Yeah. I would say 8.5. Oh. Gratulalok. Gratulalok. <laughs> so, uh, what's your favorite thing about skateboarding? Uh, the pain. No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. That's why, my boy. Good evening, everyone. We finally made it. We're in the bowels of Page itself, under the ground, under the crust of the earth, watching some of the best athletes in the whole city, in the whole country, compete in the Skate Tournament of Champions. You hear the crowd now, they are so pumped. We're here with Steg Skateboarding since 1995, Ezer Kielen Sas, Kielen Sven Uts, and we are watching the best trick competition. Let's come and take a little closer look. This is the best trick competition. They're competing for Choki and Kubanya Ishur. And we're gonna see if anyone can nail a trick right now. Let's see if this guy can do it. He's been knocking on the doorstep all night. Oh, so close, and yet so far. What do you think of the skate competition, Eddie? Um, I think it would be better if, if my boy was in it. What do you think of the skate competition? Sick. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, the shirtless, the shirtless guy. Big Air, don't care. I think he might be a member of Plutonium Banana, which is a skateboard group out of Bosch Medje. A lot of speed on the Hawaiian shirt. He's got the ponytail to match, but can he land the trick? That is what it's all about. This is the best trick competition. Will he land the trick? Oh, he's done it. He's done it. Well done. Oh, round two, not so successful. Are you from Page? Uh, no, I study here. Oh, you study here? Oh, cool. How do you like Page? Good city? It's amazing. I mean, I love it. Oh. No, no, no. Everyone just loved her answer. It was a great answer. Page is an amazing city. Kubanya, you should sponsor Plutonium Banana. Plutonium Banana, Kubanya, you should Allegio Majorosagon, Najonyo. And now we've got straight from 1993 Seattle. <laughs> The Hawaiian shirt is not aerodynamic, but he doesn't care. He's wearing the baggy jeans. And will it be a sign of success? He's got the brace on the wrist, a few broken bones. Oh, the stall! Oh, so close. But you love to see that kind of effort. We love Green Sweatshirt because he competes with a smile. He competes with a smile. He gives the people what they want, but not this time. And the shirtless wonder, they call him. Oh, the harder they go, the harder they fall. I think we're about to see history. I think we are about to see history. Hey! We saw history. We saw history. 